Hey, what's up and welcome back treasure hunters. So today I'm going to walk you through some online estate sales and auctions. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks that I use to find valuables that are underpriced so you can make the purchase and hopefully resell for some nice profit. So before I get into actually showing you the items that I purchased or the items that I plan on at least bidding on, I wanted to walk you through some things, some key things to remember while you're doing this. Now at estate sales and auctions and anything else, especially online, there's a ton of different types of items that you're going to come across. So just to make it a little bit easier and you can apply this to any type of item, but I'm going to be concentrating more on arts and sculpture and that sort of thing, just because that's usually what I look at and it's what I tend to purchase the most from these types of websites. So the first thing that I always look for is looking for unique pieces of art or things that actually stand out, things that are different from those decorative furniture store kind of, you know, paintings or sculptures that you just find anywhere. Something that really stands out as being unique. That's the first thing that I always, when I'm looking through all the different listings, are those unique pieces. The second thing to remember is to check the condition as best as you can. Some auction houses will give you a bunch of different pictures from different angles. They'll note in the description if there's any kind of damage to the item and other auction houses just won't do that. They'll give you one or two okay looking pictures and that's really it. There's nothing in the description. So if, if you can see any kind of damage or, you know, if the piece doesn't look the best, it might be a good idea to pass on the item, especially if the price keeps going up. And also, if you're looking at an auction or a state sale that has viewing hours that's local to you, it might be a good idea if the item is getting, you know, a little bit higher in price. They always have previews for items so you can walk through and actually take a look at the actual item that you're going to be bidding on. That might be a good idea if it's not too far from you know, your place of residence. So even if the item or piece of art is done by, you know, a well-known artist, if it's got a lot of damage to it, it really decreases the value. So I'm going to be showing you a lot of items that I purchased on highbid.com. And you don't actually make the purchase from highbid, but it's a conglomerate of all different kinds of auction houses that run their own auctions. But you can look at all the different listings by categories. So it's uh, kind of a place where you're not having to jump from website to website to look at, you know, if you wanted to look at sculptures or paintings or even sports memorabilia or whatever it might be, it lumps it all together. So with this being said, I tend to look at the auction houses that do estate sales and estate auctions. So auction houses that focus more like that do estate sales and stuff are going to be selling a wide array of different types of items and other auction houses may just be selling art or just be selling you know vintage furniture or antiques those auction houses have experts they know pretty much what they have so it's harder to find value at places like that and oftentimes too the starting bid at these types of places is going to be a lot higher whereas most of the estate sale auction houses or auctions are going to be minimal bids to start and there's it's a lot easier to find value at those types of auction houses if you think you found a good piece or an unidentified piece and you think you've identified the artist as an artist that carries some value with their work, it's a good idea to check the other listings that they have. So if it's in a, an estate sale from a house or, you know, a state that 
has a bunch of other valuable items like furniture or glass sculptures that are identified that seem to be selling, you know, at a higher price. The unidentified pieces probably also carry some value. They just haven't been identified yet. So if you can identify those items, uh, you know, there's a better chance that you'll be able to make some profit off of those unidentified items and misidentified items. Now, before you start bidding, you're going to want to note the size of the piece of furniture, the sculpture, the painting. You're going to want to understand how large it is. This is going to really affect how much, especially if that auction house is not a local place where you can go and pick the item up. It's going to affect how much you're actually paying for it because a lot of these auction houses use third party shippers. So they'll take all of the one lots that they are shipping and those third party shippers are the ones that are going to be actually charging you the shipping cost. And these can get expensive. So you're going to want to check the size of the piece as well as where that piece is shipping from. So I live in Ohio and you know, if I'm buying from an auction house in California, I know the shipping cost is going to be pretty expensive, especially if it's a larger piece. And with that, you're also going to want to see if the auction house that you're looking at actually offers shipping. There are plenty of listings that I've come across on items that I would like to bid at, but they don't offer shipping. And they clearly state that there is a policy at the very bottom, at least on high bid that says whether or not the auction house offers shipping on certain items, sometimes on smaller items, they'll offer shipping and other times on larger ones, they will not. So this is always really important to note before you start bidding, because if you win an item and they don't offer shipping, a lot of times they won't ship it and it'll just be considered an abandoned item and they won't refund you your money because all of that is in their policy. So note how big the item is. If the auction house actually offers shipping and if they do offer shipping, where is it coming from? And last, if you think you've identified a piece that is unidentified on one of these estate sales or auction sites, be sure to check multiple listings. And instead of checking, you know, active listings, see if you can find some actual auction results to get a good idea of how much potential value you really have. So those are some of the main key points to remember while you're searching through the different listings. So now let's get into some of the past auction purchases that I've made and also some other ones that I plan on bidding on. This piece here, and I'm going through high bid, it's the uh, auction conglomerate that you know has all different kinds of auction houses and kind of lists all the items together. And then you can also look at the individual auctions by that auction house. So this is one that I had in my um, a recent video and it is just titled Bronze Sculpture on a Wooden Base. So there's no artist mentioned in the title. I noticed that you know it did look you know somewhat older, not so much antique, but at least vintage. You can tell that it, it just by the photograph that, I mean, it's not minuscule or anything. And also flipping through the photos, you can see that it is signed here at the bottom. Now you can always zoom in on these pictures and just given the overall style of this, you can tell that this was not a cast piece. I think on some of these, I don't know if on the photos or if I noticed it when I actually got the piece, but you can actually see you know, like thumbprints and stuff in this piece. And here you can see that this is actually numbered four out of 30 and it's signed Smith. So that's not mentioned at all in the title. And then at the bottom, all it says is bronze sculpture on a wooden base and signed and numbered and then the actual dimensions of the piece. So Smith isn't mentioned whatsoever so when I noticed all that, I did a quick Google search and I just tend to search when I'm doing research, I'll look at, 
you know, okay, well, it's a bronze sculpture, and I know it's signed Smith. So I start there. After my initial search, I usually kind of glance through the suggested images, but I'll click on images first after that and start to just browse the different visuals that come up. So you can see Bruce Smith is a name here that comes up, but the overall focus of the art is a little different. The one that I wanted to bid on and did bid on was a mother and daughter. This is more of a hunting scene with a dog here and a guy with a, you know some kind of shotgun probably hunting ducks. So I didn't really think that matched up well with the piece that I was looking at. And then the other one that came up quite often was Dennis Smith. And as you look into some of these other pieces here, especially this, this matches the style that I was looking at. And it is also of a little girl. And just so I'm not, and here you can see it's signed and numbered. This one's out of two out of 12. And then after you click on a certain image, some related images will also come up. So you can tell that this piece was done by Dennis Smith and it matches the style. And it's obviously also signed Smith and numbered in the same fashion. So I didn't want to search a bunch of images on here and you know try to find, I did find his signature that matched up with the signature also. So that's always pretty important too. After doing a little bit of research on some auction results, I found that his pieces have sold from, you know, $1,000 for like smaller, more simple pieces to, you know, five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 for larger pieces. Now this isn't like an overly large piece or anything, so it'd be more on the lower end of that, but still figure that I can probably sell this between, you know, one and $2,000. I ended up winning this at 65 bucks and it did come from California. So shipping was a little bit expensive, but given the price realized then, you know, maybe 30 or $40 shipping, it's still well worth the investment if I can make the one to $2,000 that I hope to make. So here's another piece of art that I recently purchased and it was also in one of my auction videos. And you can also see that this title just says Foggy Stream Watercolor Painting and old. No mention of any kind of artist. This was actually coming from Canada and you can see that it definitely is an older painting and you can tell also they did a reverse. I like when auction houses actually take a picture of the back. It helps a lot. But you can tell that this is in, in the original frame and it's older and I think this must be the owner, or the former owner of the painting itself but even the stickers and stuff are very old styled. I couldn't make out what this said, but you can tell that it was probably either titled or I don't know, some kind of identification there. And then they give you some close ups of the piece itself, which is also really nice. Some auction houses will only give you like one or two uh, pictures, and that can be difficult in trying to identify this stuff. But everything besides the frame with some scrapes and stuff, which is pretty common, everything looks to be in pretty good condition. And you can tell that there is a signature down here and they actually took a close up of it. Now I can read this now because I know who did it, but at the time I couldn't make this out, but I thought I would take a chance anyway, just given the style and aging it to, you know, the early 1900s probably. I only ended up having to pay $14 Canadian for this, and this was actually done by T. Masamitsu, who is a Japanese painter who did a lot of landscape paintings and stuff of Mount Fuji. And his work generally sells between, you know, $125 to $200. So uh, shipping for this was only, you know, $25 or $30. Bucks, so that still leaves me a good amount of room for a nice piece to add to my store. So here's another example of artwork that was actually mislabeled instead of unidentified. So this is just painting on board signed E. Morse. It's a smaller piece and you can see that it definitely looks like E. Morse in this photo. But when I actually got it, there's another line. So it's like two letters almost combined and it's actually not E. Morse. 
and they did take a picture of the back and you can see with this older style gallery print in New York so the piece was definitely older and it was really well done um, nice little piece here it's only 14 by 10 and again this one is also coming from California like the sculpture that wouldn't be too bad with the shipping amount so with this piece I actually thought I found the artist because I went off of the e Morse and it was actually a totally different artist but it still ended up being worth the fifty dollars plus you know fifteen or twenty shipping just given uh, this was most likely done in the late 1800s early 1900s and it was actually done by Fanny S Montague Morse who did a lot of nautical type seascape paintings so here's another piece that was in my recent video and I think this was actually shipped with the other two items this is just a watercolor here and you can tell that just given the frame and the overall style looks fairly old and here you can clearly see that the signature says Emma Lane and you can see that it's an actual watercolor and here's a picture of the back also note that there are the matting does have some discoloration spots probably just due to being stored somewhere more humid maybe that can easily be rematted so I wasn't too worried about that here's more of those discoloration spots again Emma Lane was clearly written here but it just says vintage signed framed watercolor beachscape so no mention of the artist and no mention of the artist in the description and here you can see it's not again overly large so this fits all of my kind of initial criteria so knowing the artist's name is Emma Lane I just did a quick Google search of watercolor signed Emma Lane and you can see here that there are already some pieces so here is the watercolor by Emma Lane Payne and this one is listed for 500 invaluable this one is listed for 1500 same by Emma Lane Payne all of these actually here's another one this one is only listed for 100 so you can see the price varies quite a bit if you notice an artist is being sold at larger auction houses or has a complete profile on something like invaluable so when you visit a site like invaluable or I usually stay away from first dibs because their prices tend to be very inflated but other places like uh, live auctioneers and um, invaluable have a little more realistic prices and sometimes you can even see without the subscription you can see what something sold for so here you can see uh, Emma Lane Payne she has her own um, profile here which means she did have stuff sold at auction and it's in the same kind of style and you can see even here and this won't let me sometimes invaluable has these tiny photos that don't blow up but you can see Emma Lane it's the same signature but you know added pain after she got married so the piece for sale at the auction is obviously a more early piece but I did find some other pieces that sold at auction for anywhere between 800 to 1500 or 2000 or but it was all again depending on the size of the piece and the detail and everything else so I ended up winning this piece for only ten dollars so regardless of you know what those auction prices were I would have purchased this regard like anyway because for a ten dollar investment plus I got multiple things so they can um, kind of combine the shipping to reduce the per item shipping costs so it was definitely a good buy and seeing that this is an earlier piece of her work it was probably done in the late 1800s early 1900s so it is quite old so I thought this was a really good find so I just have a couple more examples I wanted to show you this one here it just says large art pottery vase and then has the size but there is no distinction on any kind of maker so this is more of you know just looking they only have the single picture they didn't show the bottom but just looking at this photo um, 
what I noticed here was the style of the vase for one, kind of uh, Art Deco kind of style, um, the two handles, and also the glaze on the piece itself. Uh, glazes like this were pretty commonly used by you know those art pottery companies back in you know the 20s 30s those in during those eras so given all that I was pretty sure that this was an older piece and given the size they didn't mention any damage but they really didn't show too many photos so it's kind of risky but usually you know if there are if there's damage to glass or pottery um, they will either take a photo or mention it or else they probably won't be in business very long so I ended up winning this it does not say what the price realized was but I won this piece for 20 or 25 bucks I can't remember and it was just coming from Virginia so shipping wasn't that expensive and later when I got the piece I posted it to a studio pottery identification Facebook group and found that it's a early Red Wing vase and sells between since this is the largest version it sells between 125 to like probably 200 dollars so this piece i actually just purchased recently and what caught my eye about it originally is definitely looks antique but it's a hand painted um, porcelain plaque and it's very well done and I wanted to see some more information on it so I was clicking through and they actually did take this out of the frame I wasn't really sure exactly what this said so I did some searches around you know W-A-Y you know whatever or W-A-G and here you can see the back of it and there is a stamp here HR and I wasn't sure exactly what that meant either so after Doing some searching around antique porcelain plaque and then our antique painting or painted porcelain plaque signed and then you know variations of that W A Y W A G I found that there was a lot of things that were popping up signed Wagner and when you look through all these different results you can see that it's a very similar style a lot of you know Victorian type I guess plaques in frames that are hand painted like here you can see the HR which stands for I don't know how to pronounce that but that all just matched up to these types of pieces and I actually didn't find any that sold but just given the different especially like on Ruby Lane given the prices that these are selling for or listed for I knew that I'd definitely be able to make some profit off of this I just wasn't exactly sure how much I'd be able to make so I went ahead and ended up winning this piece for $150 um, and here you can see it does have a lot more description um, but they were not able to come up with exactly what the name said um, it's a small piece so it shouldn't be very hard to uh, ship and also this even had a um, provenance of an antiquities dealer and they had a retail price on it of $500 um, given the other listings I saw I mean it might be more than that or it might just be $500 but either way paying only 150 for it was still a good deal here's the last piece that I actually purchased I haven't received this one yet either this just says hand colored etching and they said it was unsigned but given this style I've actually done a lot of I've had some similar pieces I thought I recognized the artist for this Here you can see you know the frame has a little bit of scrape or scratches to it but here you can see on the back I don't know they said it was unsigned but they didn't ID the artist and the artist is Icart uh, and he's very well known for French style etchings of women and that sort of thing it's so his work you know sells for a good amount of money you know over five hundred dollars depending given the size and everything this one the actual etching isn't very large 
uh, and it did say I um, artist iCart here, but I still don't know why they didn't put that in the lot title. Um, that probably would have made the price go a lot higher. But either way, um, it was a good thing for me. I got it for 35 bucks, and I don't remember exactly what shipping cost, but either way, I should be able to make a decent profit off of this. And his work is actually pretty collectible, and people really like his work, so it should sell fairly quickly once I get it here and get it um, cleaned up a bit and post it online. So if you're ever interested in looking through some auction uh, listings in you know from multiple auction houses in one spot, I suggest checking out Highbid. It's um, pretty easy to use. I know there are other ones out there. This is just the one that I tend to go to. Um, but I do check out other auction houses, actual websites, and they actually pull in the information from Hybid onto uh, their own websites. So if you find a good auction house, you might want to bookmark it so you can check out you know, their upcoming auctions and see what they have listed. Uh, here you can see, I usually just go to art, sorry for the scrolling, um, but you can just click on art. You can look at it, obviously, any of these. I just picked paintings because that was kind of the focus of this video. And some auction houses will give you, um, you know, more art related ho auction houses will give you a price estimate on the value. Some places will not. Uh, so here you can see. You know some listings this one's closing you know in 30 seconds and some of this art like this canvas thing is something you could probably get at like target or something and then other auction houses will are that are strictly selling art you won't really be able to find great deals because they're starting bid so you can see zero bids and the starting bid is 475 dollars so they say the value is at 950 to 975 but where they got that number I don't know so it's hard to trust that you could sell it for that amount other ones you can also tell by photos too um, so you can tell all of these photos are professionally done they show just the artwork whereas photos like this you can tell it's an estate sale because it's just still hung on the wall and they just go through and take these photos and they're really not great photographs um, of any kind of products, you know, because they're not really showcasing things or stuff in the background, whatever. So looking through different pieces, and I am watching some of these just to see, you know, how high they get. So this was one piece that I'm actually bidding on now, and the price is only at like $30 and just a little bit ago I bid a hundred and ten and I've already been outbid so somebody must also kind of be keen on this pair of paintings here you can clearly see it says Bill Mittag M-I-T-T-A-G and I did a quick search of his and his work was all selling for a really good amount of money this one's not overly elaborate or anything and it's kind of on the smaller side but still you know is definitely worth watching I probably won't I'll probably watch this and with these auction sites when you bid um, in the last five minutes I can't wait until there's like 10 seconds left and then outbid someone and then the auction won't close it will and it'll add like five minutes or three minutes or whatever back on the clock so people have a chance to continue to bid if they want the item so you can't really snipe any bids in there and win something at the last second and this piece is just kind of a bonus it kind of looks really cool uh, dark lakeside type painting but they don't really show too many pictures of that one besides just this back which definitely looks like an older painting also so I'll continue to watch this and I'll probably just end up putting my high bid in and if someone outbids me then that's that you know and I I won't go too high and that's another thing to always remember 
when you're doing this is don't get carried away with the bidding. Make sure you stick to, you know, this is the most I'm going to pay for an item. And that way you're not going to start really eating into profits and not, you know, being able to make money off of certain items that you might have overbid on. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed these tips and tricks on finding value at estate sales and online auctions. If you found some useful tips, please hit that like button. And if you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell for my channel. I'd really appreciate it. It's really hard to cover everything when doing this. I mean, there are so many different variables and things. So I tried to give you a quicker run through of some of the you know, best advice I could give, I guess. Uh, but I'm sure if you have any questions, please just mention them in the comments and I'll answer them as soon as I can. I'll keep you updated on the items I receive as well as if I end up winning any of these items that I'm watching. But for now, we'll just keep an eye out and we'll see if I can possibly, you know, get some good value out of these auctions that are closing. So I appreciate you all. Good luck out there treasure hunting if you get out and also good luck finding some of these great valuable items here on these estate sales.